started. Okay, so uh, the last couple of days we have been looking at certain types of experiments that allow us to get a better insight into how plants work and what plants actually do. What I want to do today is quickly go through those experiments again. I want you to explain those experiments to me, why we're doing it, what the point of the experiment is, how do we make sure they are fair tests, and then what I'm going to do is we're going to talk about some seeds and seed adaptations. Before, uh, before next class, before we move on to spores and cones and hopefully some experiments with spores and cones. So I'm going to share my screen with you straight away and let's get started, okay? So uh, we've looked at four experiments in particular. Um, I found it quite hard to find any more, but uh, I do have one more which I'm going to show you tomorrow. I just want to go through these ones today. We looked at this experiment yesterday. Who can tell me what is the reason? Why do, why, why do we conduct this experiment? What is the experiment showing us? Eraser, look at the experiment on the slide, okay? What do you think that experiment is for? Seeing how they grow in okay. water. Okay, seeing how plants grow in water. Okay, you could see that. What else can you see from that experiment? Bill? Uh, it, it shows that. Uh, when when a plant is in the water, can it grow? Okay, can it grow? And what is what's a sign that a plant can grow in water? What do we know a plant does with sunlight? Uh, the leaves uh, make uh, food for the plant. Okay, so it makes food. And what's what's one of the things that happens when a plant makes food? What else does it make? It makes oxygen. It makes air. Yeah, it makes oxygen. Okay. So what this experiment shows is that when a plant is growing and it makes food, even underwater, that it still releases oxygen. It still makes oxygen. So the, the gas yes. collected at the top is oxygen. Okay. So if you were to explain what is this experiment about, it is about watching what happens when a plant grows in water. So it still makes food and it still makes oxygen as well. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Who can tell me what does this picture show? Mr. Kent, good morning. They're showing what that the tree get. What does the tree get? Okay, what does the tree absorb and what else? Uh, and what the tree make out. Okay, so it shows what the tree gets or what the tree, what the tree absorbs and what the tree makes. There's one more thing that it does, Kent. What does it do? What does A show? These arrows, what do those arrows show? What these ones this do? arrow show what part of the tree make. So what, so what, is, what is A showing? So you look at A, A is here. Okay. We said A is water, Fruit. right? So yes. what is A showing us? It's showing us the way that water moves in a tree, right? Yes. So A is showing us what way water moves in a tree. S what is showing how the part of the tree going. Um, so remember there's two tubes in trees, right? So there's water tube and then there's a food tube. In this situation, this part A is showing the movement of water. Kent, where does water, or how does water get into a plant? Water gets from root. Yeah, so it's absorbed from the roots, right? And Kent, where is yeah. food made in a plant or a tree? Leaf. In the leaves, okay. So you've got water tubes and food tubes. Water tubes only go up, food tubes go around the place, okay? So what we need to remember. So what this shows is where certain things enter in the tree where certain things leave a tree and what way the nutrients in the water moves within a tree as well this next experiment what is this next experiment about okay monkey this experiment is about plants uh, so taking up water yeah. Plants taking up water okay and what about what about plants taking up water um it shows that plants take up water so got water. Okay, uh, and what else? 
what else is a shell? What's the other side of it? So we've got one beaker that has a plant, one beaker that has no plant. What's the, what do you think the point that you're showing, you're saying that the experiment is about plants taking up water. What, what can we do to make sure that we understand how much water plants take up? How, can, how do we actually test it? What do we need to do to make sure the test works? Let's try B. We um, put a plant in and we measure how much water it soaks up. Well, um, why do you think we have beaker A and beaker B? Why do you think we have two beakers? When we talked about testing and when you're testing a particular product, what we need is a control. Okay, We need to find out what the normal thing that happens is. Okay, So we are looking at... Um, looking to see how much uh, a plant can absorb, okay? So what we need to do is have a situation where we have nothing happening, a control. We are controlling the outcome of what the experiment is. In this situation, we're saying, okay, well look, we're gonna have beaker B. Beaker B, nothing's gonna happen in beaker B, okay? So that is your control. Your control is what you test against. So you have beaker B, where nothing is happening. Beaker A, where something is happening. You are then able to compare beaker A against beaker B. If you know the result of beaker B, what you test in beaker A is going to show you what's different. So the point of having two beakers is that you are then able to understand and compare the differences, okay? That's the point. That's why we have two beakers, is to compare the differences. Because you know what's going to happen, and then you can actually see what has happened. Does everyone understand? Please tell me like yes or no if you understand. So if you understand, give me a thumbs up, please. All right, okay. Lily, to, uh, to try to give you another explanation of that again, okay? Okay, so say you bought a new pen, okay? And you have an old pen, so you have two pens. You've got your old pen and you've got your new pen. With your old pen, you know that if you write a line, that that line is going to be one millimeter thick. And you want to see if your new pen can make a thicker line, make a line that's two millimeters long, okay? So what you do is you take your old pen and you draw a line. That is your control. That is what you know is going to happen. This is your old pen. You know what's going to happen. You then take your new pen. You draw the exact same line, a little bit over, and then you can compare, okay? So you have your control where you know what's gonna happen. And then you have your new line which allows you to compare against the old and the new. So in this experiment, the testing of A to see how much water the plant can absorb against the control of no, nothing, no absorbing, okay? So that's how it works. You have one control where you know what the monster is, and two, you're looking to see what the difference is. Does that make sense, Lily? Yeah? Okay, cool. As we said before, line one makes sense because there's no absorption, there's nothing happening. We have a layer of water to make sure there's no evaporation. Line number two, starting from zero milliliters to 200, well, that doesn't work. And line four, why do line two and line four not work? Why can you not use them in an experiment? What's wrong with them? Ava? Uh, because uh, when... Uh Line two is when it starts from zero and it got more uh, water when afterward. Mm -hmm. So and line four. Yeah, go on. And line four get down, but the because the beaker didn't start with two hundreds. Yeah. Okay. So what what do we say that? What do we call that? So you've all heard of the idea of a fair test, right? A fair test is when all the variables are the same. In this situation, when you take lines two and lines four, it's not a fair test. You can't start a test by comparing two things against each other if the variables are different. For example, if you have 200 milliliters in beaker A and zero milliliters in beaker B, what are you testing? Absolutely nothing. If you look at 200 milliliters and 100 milliliters, yes, it's closer, but it's still not the same. So therefore, your test is unfair. When you test something, you need to make sure it's a fair test. And that's the point. When you do an experiment, it's to compare your answers, all right? So last one. 
uh, before we move on to some C's. What, what is the point of this experiment and what does this experiment show? Yes, Dino. To, to get us to know about food carrying tools and water carrying tools. Yeah, cool. So the experiment is to show us about food carrying tubes and water carrying tubes. What can you say about water carrying tubes with this experiment? Elsa. The water carrying tubes take up the water so the plant can turn red. Yeah, okay. So they take up the water. Remember the water carrying tubes will always start from the bottom and go to the top. Water always travels up in plants. What can we say about food carrying tubes in the plant? Let's try Ming Chou. The tubes carry food uh, up to the plant. And, uh... Okay, where, where do food carrying tubes start? From the leaves. Yeah, from the leaves. So they don't go up, they go around the plant, right? So you can say that food carrying tubes bring food from the leaves around the plant. Okay, from the leaves around the plant. So the point of the experiment is to show that water always travels up a plant. Travels up a plant. Dino, you have a question? One second, sorry Dino. Yeah, go on. But how about the food carrying tubes and, and the water carrying tubes get poked and uh, the water and food carrying tubes can absorb each other so the, uh, so the food carrying tube gets some color from the water carrying tube. This is a little bit more advanced than you probably should get, but I'll give you a really quick understanding, okay? So uh, imagine a straw, okay? So imagine we're talking about plants and we're talking about the tubes inside of a plant. We'll talk about a straw. And we'll talk about water carrying tubes in particular. Water carrying tubes work under the idea of pressure. So what happens is that parts of the plant will squeeze at certain points and push water up and they do this via pressure what you have at the end of each section of the water carrying tube are these little flaps that open and close when you add pressure the flap opens and when the pressure is released the flap closes so what happens is the water goes up and it doesn't go back down because the flap is closed at this point so the more pressure Flap opens, closes, opens, closes, opens, closes. Now, with the food carrying tubes, it's not under that same principle because it needs to push around and down and up, okay? So it has other ways and other mechanisms of doing that. For that reason, water tubes and food carrying tubes don't mix. Now, Dino, I do agree with you that at some point there may be some slight coloration there may be some of the red color get into the leaves and the flowers that could happen but compared to a full water tube it's unlikely to happen okay so that mix of food carrying tubes and water carrying tubes it doesn't occur very often okay because they're completely separate types okay um yeah so the point of this experiment is to show that water gravitates upwards okay that starts from the bottom and moves up and when you make cuttings here and here you stop the water from flowing up and as a result you stop those flowers from turning red okay does anybody have any questions about those experiments before we quickly move on if you're interested i would advise you to have a look on youtube just type in leaf or or uh, rainbow rose creation so basically there's a lady who takes eight different types of colors cuts up roses in eight different types of ways and puts the stems in different pots and what she does is she creates a rainbow rose so each leaf has a different color it's pretty interesting is a another quick way to see that uh, we're gonna move on okay uh, we spoke about so we spoke previously about pollination we spoke about fertilization and it all leads up to reproduction so pollination is the transfer of pollen from one flower to another fertilization is the pollen from one flower hitting the stigma and going down the style into the ovule and fusing with an egg. That is fertilization. Do not get that confused with reproduction. So who can explain reproduction to me, especially in a plant? Who can, ex who can explain it? What do, okay, let's try this again. What does the word reproduce mean? Laura. Make again? Yeah, pretty much. Make again. 
means to do something or to make something again. So in when you think about a plant, a plant is making what to make itself again. Emily, what does a plant do to reproduce again? They make fruits and seeds. They make fruits and seeds. Yeah, that's it. So what a plant does when it wants to reproduce is it makes, a, it makes fruit or it makes seeds. The whole point of it doing this is that within that seed, there is the ability to make another plant. Okay, That's the point of what we're trying to do. So when you're talking about a plant life cycle, it's always going to follow the same steps. Seed, seedling, uh, young plant, mature plant, fruit or seed, and then it starts again. The way that you know, the mature plant makes a seed is pollination first, then it's going to fertilization, then it's going to reproduction. After those three steps occur, the seed is formed. It's then up to the plant to get the seed out, to make the seed go to different places, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So remember that it always follows those particular steps, okay? Pollination first, then fertilization, then reproduction. The ways to make pollination happen, as Dino said, is pollinators. The way fertilization happens is pollen goes down the stigma, down the style, down the stigma, and then fuses with an egg in the ovule, and then reproduction happens. That egg then turns into a seed. Once we have a seed, though, what happens? So we spoke about a lot of plant adaptations. What about seed adaptations? What can you think when I say seed adaptations? It comes to seed dispersal. Yeah, yeah. So, so why do you think seeds have adaptations as well? Um, so sometimes seeds get overcrowded, so they don't want to get they want to get less overcrowded, so they can have much space to grow. Yes, exactly. So, the one thing you all need to remember, in particular, when it comes to seeds, plants have been really clever. They're really smart. Plants understand that. You know what? I don't want to go to a crowded place. Plants have decided that they do not like to be that close to other plants, probably because they're fighting for the same things, right? They both need sunlight, they both need water, and they need some space to grow in order to make sure they can get, like, get this sunlight and this water. So what they've said is, like, okay, hold on. I need to find ways to make sure that when my reproduced seed or my baby is growing up, it can grow in a place where it can actually grow. So how can I do that? It needs to get space. So over time, what plants have done is adapted the way that they get their seeds dispersed. What are some ways that plants get their seeds dispersed? Go, oh, Annie, I haven't heard from you today. Uh, seeds are moved by wind. Moved by wind, okay. Someone give me another example, please. Bill, tell me another way that Seeds are moved. It moved by animals. Animals, cool. Minnie, tell me another one. It move, can be moved by us. Yeah, it can move by people, 100%. Lucy. Um, can move by water. It can move by water, exactly. So, plants have been extremely ingenious. Emily, can you think of another one, please? Cool. So, see, plants have been very clever. They said that, you know what, I need to find different ways to move seeds, okay? So here's a, like a, a list of them. And here's some of the ways that plants have been pretty ingenious about the way that they, uh, they can move them, okay? So, how seeds can travel. You have this kind of seed, it's got this kind of parachute, and the seed is attached to the bottom, so the wind takes the parachute and it blows it off. A dandelion seed is kind of the same thing. And a maple leaf. Maple trees have this kind of helicopter motion so that when the wind catches them, they spin and they fly off into the distance. Some are moved by animals. So they, uh, they're be beggar sticks or they're sambles or, oh, sorry, or uh, thorns or, sorry, even blackberries. Blackberries are sticky so that when animals brush past them, the seed actually sticks to the side of them and then gets moved off. Some are moved by water, a lotus plant something that's very, very, very prevalent here in Vietnam. I live really close to a really big, uh, I would say it's a lotus farm. It's definitely just a lot of lotus flowers. And out of nowhere, they just grow straight away. And it's all moved by water. Most, and, and even coconuts. 
coconuts are from are found mainly on islands and to get a coconut from one side of the island to another what generally happens is the coconut falls in the water and it's carried by the water to a distant place some places some plants burst open they explode and their seeds go everywhere violets snap peas they explode some by humans beans and wheat and and cherries we plant these we grow these we put them in different places so that they can get the space which they need to grow so all of these ways are are different and in <laughs> ingenious basically in order to find space for the plants to grow why do you think certain plants decided that wind was better than water what what do you think what do you think the difference is monkey because maybe their seeds are very like delicate and if they flow in water they can maybe sing into the bottom of the water because they're light uh maybe okay okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna cheat i'm gonna give you all the answer okay there we go so the reason would be is that lucy you spoke about adaptation okay adaptation is something that helps a plant or an animal survive in its environment okay so if i asked you the question why do some plants think that wind is better than water in order to disperse seeds is their environment what's around them maybe maybe for some types of plants but there isn't wind but there is a lot of water maybe water is a good way to do it so the plants have evolved and adapted so that their seeds will travel based on the environment that they are in okay and that's the key point here is the environment. What is around them has altered the way that they have done things. Uh, that's us pretty much finished for today. Uh, I'll send you another quizzes for you to complete. Okay, everyone. Bye-bye.